Welcome to the Eclectic 47 VIF Review. My name is Jessica Cole. And I'm Nick Munye. And we're going to talk about Ite 85. Summer of 85. Yeah, or Summer of 85. I realized I didn't know how to say 85 in French, so I stopped halfway through. Is it 85? Is it? Yeah, that would be, be 85. 4 20s, 5. Yes. Okay. Summer of 85 is a French film about a young romance between two boys and everything that comes from it from one fateful summer. What did you think of Summer of 85? So it feels a lot like a lot of the rom-coms that we watch. It's not really set apart from those, aside the fact that it's French. But you would say the story is maybe comparable to that of a Netflix rom-com? Yeah, like I said, I would say slightly better. To me, this movie felt like if Essie Hinton had made Call Me By Your Name, felt a lot like The Outsiders, and that partially was due to the time that the movie was set. So it obviously is made to feel that way because it's around the same time as The Outsiders and Rumblefish. It's good. I think it's, like I said, I think it's better than a lot of the rom-coms we do watch. Watch, but it still felt more generic than I was expecting it to be. So there just wasn't any pizzazz for you. It definitely feels like the YA version of Call Me By Your Name, and it makes sense because it's based on a YA book. It definitely has YA vibes, maybe in the way that the characters are motivated. That's young adult for anyone who doesn't know. I really liked it when we first watched it. I still do like it now, but I definitely had issues with the way that the characters were written because it felt a lot of the time like they were acting on emotion. I didn't fully understand. Especially, I found Kate switches really quickly from being really devastated about something to suddenly almost not caring about it, just in the span of a couple seconds when she's talking to Alex. And there was a lot of little moments like that. We can say what happens at the beginning. This is the first scene they establish that Alex and David are best friends and lovers, and they hint at the fact that Alex could have potentially killed David. And then the rest of the movie switches between the past, which is the summer of 85, and the present which is I think implied to be the fall afterwards and when we get to about halfway through the movie we have the climax of the film and then everything takes place in the present which is the fall and that actually was something I really did not like I didn't feel like the time jump offered very much to the story other than this hinting at oh what happened did Alex kill him what happened with this mystery we don't know but I feel like we could have just had that opening scene and then we could have been entirely in the summer and then been entirely in the fall whereas when we're jumping back and forth I didn't really find the fall scenes that compelling it's Alex being sad and moping around but when we're in the summer there's all this sparkliness and this romance and all these characters and we're having fun and I really wanted to be only in those scenes and I didn't find the juxtaposition really did much for me it didn't help me understand the characters more the jumping between the two timelines was confusing there wasn't really anything to differentiate anything besides Alex's hair being a different length they set it up that it's this grand mystery as to what he did and it's kind of Riverdale e the mystery of what happened if it was just a straight romance with these cute moments and then one of the men happening to die I almost feel like that would be a better film I feel like that would have more impact and be more interesting because when you get down to it the things that Alex gets arrested for and the things he does aren't really things that I understand why he was arrested for doing them I also didn't understand why he had to do those things right then right now because I won't say what they are because we obviously don't want to spoil it but I don't understand why he couldn't have just waited a year or waited at least a few months to do those actions because there was no time crunch. It's not as if he was moving away. It's not as if school was in a different country or a different city and he was never going to go back there again. He could have just waited and done these things later. I really don't like in romantic movies or any movies when a character does something because the plot needs them to and that action felt very either it was in the novel or the script says he has to so that's why he's doing it now. But I was like why would he do that now? Why wouldn't he just logically wait? And I guess you could maybe say emotionally he was not going to recover until he did that, but I didn't get the sense of that. I got the sense that he had to do that now because he promised he would and not because it actually made sense for him. But also the promise didn't have an ex expiration date on it. The, the promise could have happened at any point. And it's, uh, yeah, I just felt like those stakes almost didn't, just didn't need to happen when they did. And so I was kind of confused as to why there is such seriousness to it when compelling story is the relationship and the death of one of them and the impact that that leaves I don't think the outcome of that impact was anything that I felt believable that's where I felt like it was a young adult novel it felt like the younger brother to call me by your name where it didn't understand that subtlety and it didn't understand the the emotional intelligence needed for that relationship and 
that's fine because it's not a bad movie at all. It just drops the ball for me for that and makes me like it less than other things. I think that if this movie had taken the cue from Call Me By Your Name, the book, which is to have a scene at the end where the characters are much older and are reflecting on their relationship, that could have really tied this movie in a nice bow and given that emotional satisfaction that we were both looking for. Imagine if we have the whole summer plot line all in the past and then we have just that one crucial scene that was needed in the fall but instead of it being fall of 85 it's fall of 1997. I think that brings a lot more weight to it because you have Alex coming back to his youth and reflecting on this summer and this relationship that meant so much to him. I would say though what worked with this movie worked really well. Their relationship was so sweet to watch. I was so in it. The scenes where they're in the club especially and he plays sailing for the first time was my favorite scene in the whole movie. I loved it so much. Pretty much anything that David did to interact with Alex. When they're riding on David's motorcycle for the first time and David gives Alex the helmet, it was so cute and happy and you just like see that they're happy to be together. There's a genuine connection that really could be felt. It just feels like it's all kind of thrown away, unfortunately. It felt like the other scenes were a distraction from what we actually wanted to pay attention to. I also will say for people who maybe had an issue in Call Me By Your Name with the age difference between the two characters, which is a lot bigger in the movie than it was in the book. The age difference here is two years. Alex is 16 and David is 18. I definitely understand why people had issues with the age difference in Call Me By Your Name and I think if that was stopping you from liking the movie, you might like this one more, even though objectively I don't think this movie is as good as Call Me By Your Name, which I really liked. I also didn't really like the second last scene when they're in the courtroom. Just the way that everything gets resolved felt very, oh it all just fell together and this this character has solved everything. I didn't like that. It felt very convenient the way everything ended and then it almost cheapened the plot that we had before that I already didn't really like which was this mystery which was not the most satisfying thing to watch. Yeah it was a very quick ending. But that being said if you think that this movie looks good from the stills if you even just want to see a cute romance movie I would recommend this. It's not bad at all. I would probably give it a three out of five. Yeah three is exactly what I was going to say for it as well. I think the things it's it succeeds in, it succeeds in very well, and then when it falters, it also falters a lot. It was one of the things I was most anticipating, and I'm really happy we finally did watch it, and I'm not really that let down with the outcome, and I would happily watch it again. That was our thoughts on Summer of 85. Ete de 85. Did I say it? Yes, I'm pretty sure it's just Ete 85. Ete 85. I'm French. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for listening. I'm Jessica Cole. I'm Nick Monier. You can find us at eclectic47.com or eclectic47 on YouTube. You are listening to this on one of those two platforms and they link to each other, so you probably already knew that, but here you go. Thanks so much for listening. Hope you watch the film. Hope you enjoy. Bye. Bye.